GitHub Universe. I'm Brian Randall, and I work at GitHub, and today I want to give you an update on GitHub Actions, our CI-CD platform for millions of developers. GitHub Actions is the number one CI-CD platform on GitHub. This last month, we crossed over 1 billion minutes of cloud-based usage in a single month. That's just crazy. Those minutes translate into over 300 million jobs. Outstanding. Now, while I love crazy stats, what makes me even happier is the broad adoption that those numbers translate to in customers, open source projects, and community contributions. The GitHub Marketplace currently has over 15,000 community actions with thousands of those verified from publishers like Microsoft, AWS, and Google. So let's dig into actions today. GitHub Actions is enterprise-grade CI-CD that supports the core features you'd expect in a modern CI-CD platform. And we hear this directly from individual customers too. We've worked with Pinterest on their CI-CD workflows. Pinterest moved many of its largest source projects, including Gestalt and Texture, to GitHub by using Actions, and in their words, it's been an incredibly successful project. They've reduced build time significantly and no longer need to babysit their CI-CD and can focus on code contributions. It's super easy to get started with GitHub Actions because it's just a tab click away from your repo. Using the config as code concept, your GitHub Actions are stored as versioned files right in your repo. Everything is integrated with your code, taking you from nothing to action in seconds. At times, I can't believe it's been years since we've released our first version of GitHub Actions, but we've not been taking it easy. Over the last year, we've been hard at work to make Actions even better. We've added features to help you scale your processes as well as implement control features you have requested. For example, reusable workflows and custom Actions allow you to take advantage of code reuse for building an Action or workflow once and then reusing it throughout your organization. The ability to reference actions from internal repos makes it much easier to share actions through your company. This provides you with the ability to limit self-hosted runners to specific workflows, and this allows you to ensure that critical workflows always have a runner available to them. We've worked hard to improve the starter workflow experience. We've made it easier to discover security-related workflows from the getting started experience. Now you can easily find workflows to set up analysis tools from Veracode or Sync, for example. And we will recommend security-specific workflows to you based off the content of your repository, allowing you to implement those security workflows that much faster. With OpenID Connect, we made deployments more secure. OpenID Connect allows your workflows to exchange short-lived tokens directly from your cloud provider. This eliminates the need to save hard-coded secrets needed to access cloud services. Example providers that are currently supported by OIDC include Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and HashiCorp Vault. Beyond what I've already mentioned, we have implemented some of the most requested user experience improvements. The ability to rerun an entire workflow, see all the previous runs, and rerun with debugging makes actions and workflows much more pleasant to work with. We've increased the artifact cache to 10 gigabytes which allows you to store more cache files for your workflow, which helps your workflows run faster. Job summaries is another great feature. It allows you to display any information you would find relevant in your workflow summary, like test or scan results. Dynamic names for workflow runs allows you to customize the name of the workflow run that is displayed on the Actions tab, allowing you to give the workflow run a more helpful name. And in the interest of making sure our customers have access to the latest runners, we have added GitHub hosted runner images for Mac OS 11 and 12, Windows Server 2022, and Ubuntu 22.04. Beyond all those great features we've already shipped, I'm also very excited about the beta of custom GitHub hosted runners. These runners allow you to create runners with more cores, more memory, and storage than a standard hosted runner. This will help you potentially complete your builds even faster. Beyond the extra performance, what's really cool is the ability to define static private IP address ranges. This allows your GitHub hosted runners access to internal resources for your CI-CD process by only having to open a small port range in your firewall. 
Our runners have the latest tools installed and help scale on demand as you need it. Finally, coming soon in beta, we'll be providing auto scaling self hosted runners on top of Kubernetes. We've heard from many customers that they want a GitHub supported way to create self hosted, scaling ephemeral runners similar to how the GitHub hosted runners work in the cloud. We are working on a Kubernetes solution to this problem. Our solution that will be free and that you won't have to pay for any sort of per job tax. This will support both GitHub Enterprise Server 3.5 or later, as well as GitHub Enterprise Cloud. Now, let's switch over to a demo of many of these great new features. So now we're going to go in and look at some example GitHub Actions deploying an application securely to Microsoft Azure. So as you can see here, I'm at my repo for Popular Repos web app. And what this is is a very simple web app that goes through GitHub and looks at the popular repos based upon the programming language being used. As you can see over here in the right hand side, I have a list of environments that I've deployed to. This includes staging, review lab, and production. And if I click on production, it'll open a new tab and show me the deployment history that I've made for this particular environment. Now if I click view deployment, it'll take me to the website and show me the popular repositories. So you can see the number one repository here going down the list, and you can see I can filter by different languages. So there's JavaScript, C Sharp, etc. But you know, I know some of my team members at GitHub are going to be a little sad because we're missing Ruby. Let's go change that. I'm going to go back over here into my repo, and you notice, of course, I have my source code available here. Now I can use something like GitHub Code Spaces if I wanted, but this is going to be a simple edit. So I'm just going to switch over here to one of my other tabs that I have already opened and show you the source code for this home.js file. And to see over here on line six, it goes through the different programming languages. So I'm just gonna click edit and come into this nice new editing experience and come over here and put a comma. And then we'll add Ruby, how we missed her. So we'll click commit changes and we'll say update so that Ruby gets some GitHub love because we love our programming languages. And let's see if we can get a little emoji here, a little heart. There we go. Got to have emoji. And you see here, it's going to be committed by me, but I'm going to create a new branch. And you'll see it's automatically given it a name, and we'll propose those changes. So as you can see, I'm in here at my new open pull request. And down here on the right-hand side are all the features you come to know and love, the ability to add reviewers, assignees, labels, and more. I'm good to go with this. I'm just going to create the pull request. Now, right away, what you see is that Actions has picked up that I have started this pull request, and it's starting a couple of workflows here. Deploy site reusable, including code analysis, and deploy site reusable deploy app. And so if we come over here to one of my other tabs, we'll see that I have deploy with reuse.yaml. And you'll notice that we have two jobs in here, the code analysis and build deploy, which I just showed you over on the pull request page. Now this is great. This one is using a workflow that is shared throughout our organization. So it's over in our workflows repo and we're pulling it in. So anytime we want to adjust code analysis, we can just update that central file and this will update all of our pull requests. So the nice thing about this is we can go back and just update this central file and all of our workflows will be able to take advantage of it. Then going down here, we see we have our deploy app, which is using our shared build and deploy YAML file. So if we come over and click that one, you'll see this one goes through and has a bunch of information here, but most notably, it only has information about which Azure environment I want to work with. All of our secrets, as we'll see later, are being taken care of through OIDC. So we scroll down a little bit, we can see things related to our jobs that we're running on, installing dependency, and you'll notice the ability to use our caching feature, just as we talked about earlier. Down here a little further, we can see our Azure login, and notice with this Azure login, we don't have to provide anything secret. We're just giving it the client ID, the tenant ID, and the subscription ID. Now, now that this is going on, let's go over and take a look at how things are going. So I'm going to come back over here, and we'll open up my Actions tab. And we'll see that we've come up here and update so that Ruby gets some love. So we'll click on that, and we can see our nice workflow stream as it's going through. So our code analysis workflow job ran just fine. Our deploy app and build is running, and based upon the fact that it came through as a pull request, 
it's pushing it into our deploy review environment. And now if I right click on this and open it in a new tab, we will see there's the website, but notice the URL. This is not my prod environment. This is a review environment. And now we can see all of our different languages, including Ruby. And there you go, Rails being the number one project. So that makes me happy. So now what I want to be able to do is go out and make sure that this gets out into production. Again, I want to take advantage of some of those great features that we've added, including things like approvers. So I'm going to come back over here, and you'll see that Octorine Patch has recent pushes within a minute ago. So I can come over here and take a look. We can see the changes I made. Go look at the pull request that's going on. And it looks like it's good. All the checks have passed. I'm really happy now. And so I'll come over here and click Merge Pull Request. Confirm the merge. And there we go. So now that's going to start another workflow. So let's come over here to over to our Actions tab. And we can see that we've got two different items going on. The first one down here is a cleanup PR that I'll show you in a second. And then, of course, as you'd expect, the merging pull request. So it's going to go through and run code analysis again. right? Got to double check before we go into main. And then it's going to do deploy app and build. But what we'll see is instead of taking this route down here, we're going to come up through staging and then production. Now, one of the great things about working with this type of setup is that we have the ability to protect our environments with branch protection rules. And so if we come over here to this other tab called environments, which I got to by going into settings, we can see that first of all, we have required reviewers. So Chris, Jeremy, or myself is going to have to approve this before it ultimately goes to production. You notice also down here that only code coming out of main is allowed to go into production. So we don't have to worry about a developer accidentally getting code that isn't really ready for prime time into our main environment. And then finally, you'll notice down here, we do have a feature called environment secrets. And that would be useful if maybe we're using something self-hosted that didn't support OIDC. But because we're talking to Azure and it does support OIDC, we don't have to have any secrets stored in our environment. Now let's go back to our workflow, and we'll see it's almost done there, but it's also running this other code security scan. Now if we take a look at our different items that are going on here, and we come back over, we can see the environments being worked on here, and come over here, right? We can see the jobs running, going through, it's done its build, it's done its deploy review, and then it's gonna get ready to deploy into the staging. You notice we can get run details to see how long something is taking, and you can jump straight to your workflow file to see what is being executed. Once again, these are just nice little paper cuts that we've got rid of. Now coming back in here, it says, okay, we deployed successfully to staging, but now we want to go to production. And in order to do for production, I have to come over and get someone to approve this. So we click U deployments, and it says, okay, someone needs to sign off. So I'm going to check the box that it can go into production, and I'm going to specify that I said it's okay. All right, so the ship it squirrel says ship it. We'll click approve and deploy. And now that's going to kick off the final deployment stage into production. Now while that's running, let's go back over to my workflow list. And let's show you that we have this cleanup PR. One of the nice things we can do is we can have extra workflows that do other things inside GitHub. One of the things we took advantage of earlier when I deployed the application out to staging was I also did a review deployment using staging slots. And so now I'm just cleaning that up. So this is just a nice little housekeeping workflow that we're able to call out while we actually do our main job. So let's go back to our actions and we'll see we're almost there. And it's deploying into production. You notice down here, we can see the deployment reviews. I approved it 41 seconds ago. You can see the comment I made. Scroll down a little further, we can see annotations that are showing up telling us that, hey, we've got some deprecated actions that we might need to clean up. So I can go in if I needed to and create an issue for that, et cetera. Fantastic, look at that. I've got a green check mark. I click the link and now my change, going through a nice pull request process with code analysis, security scans, all done. We see all our popular repositories and there again, Ruby, our loved language, is got Rails at number one. Hopefully you can see that we've not been standing still. We want GitHub Actions to be your number one choice for CICD. GitHub has a public roadmap where you can see what new features we have planned and when we are estimating their release. You can follow these links for more information on all of GitHub's upcoming features, as well as a filtered view just showing actions-related updates. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of GitHub Universe.